Traditionally, in Yoruba land, the region is the, the former western region, which is the whole of Yoruba land, all of the five states in the, of the west. Traditionally, marriage is between two families. It's not between the boy and the girl or the man and the woman. And the reason is to, to I believe, is a way of solidifying the union. At least when we, that's how we knew it. Of course, things have changed now. That when you remember, the, the idea is that when you think about, okay, this, my wife did something that, I, that makes, making me so angry, you can't just kick her out because you have to think about, oh my God, what do I tell the parents? What do I tell the grandfather that was at this traditional event? So the person that is called the Alaga now, famously called the Alaga, is the person that represents the families. There's a spokesperson, like an MC, the spokesperson for the groom side, the spokesperson for the bride side. But the bride's spokesperson talks the most or talks more than the other person. So the origin of it is, it started from introduction. It's, it used to be just introduction. We want this family to meet this family. Like when I was going to get married, my husband's family, they sent, they lived in Lagos, we lived in a different town called Ibado. They had a delegation that came to meet my family in Ibado. We, and then my own family had a delegation too. My father was late then, but my mother, my stepmother, my brothers, my sisters, and cousins, big and little, they were all there to welcome them. That's how, that's what morphed into what we know now. It's just to introduce each other, to say, okay, our child, so the groom side will come and say, our daughter, I mean, our son is interested, has found love in your family. And we want you to know that we welcome your child. We welcome your daughter. We will treat her like our own daughter. She will not just be a wife. And then they will bring gifts. And gifts, that then, that gift will be just like uh, wine and fruits and cookies or you know stuff like that that is the first stage at that time it, now the 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 alaga the the current the way the alaga is set up now they do this they do both together but then you it used to be you would do what this introduction will be done like maybe this weekend and then the next weekend you do the wedding but because for logistics reasons they can't do that now because if you are here in the u.s and your families are flying in from wherever they can't come this week and then come back next week. Sometimes they might even do the introduction three months, four months, six months, even a year before the actual wedding. So that is how it started. And then it morphed into what we now know as the alaga. Alaga just means the person who is sitting down, the chairperson. So the chairperson that is sitting down. And there's, there are two types. There's the alaga iduro, the standing chairperson, the standing person that is standing for the groom, and then the alaga ijoko, that is the bride's, uh, the bride's MC. Like I said, the bride's MC has control, more control than the groom's. So she's sitting down when the bride's fa family comes. Now, bear in mind that these events traditionally are not the same. The first one I explained is just introduction, the, the families come, the, it's, not, it's a smaller event. They meet usually in a living room like this. They meet with the family of the groom. They, they eat, they drink, they just felicitate. That's, and then everybody goes home. But then the family of the bride now knows that this girl, you have, you have been betrothed to somebody. You have someone who is interested in you. So in a way, you don't expect the girl to be coming home with other boys or men or anything. That's the person. And the same thing with the groom. But once this is done, it's at that meeting that they will talk about, okay, when are we going to come and pay dowry? When are we going to bring all the rights, the things that are due to you for this, for giving us your daughter? And that is how the traditional engagement started. That is how, that is now, so they would decide, okay, we can, we can give a date. Before, it used to be the bride's family would give the date. But now, you know, civilization and all, they both agree, they agree on it. So they, 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 the couple might give, like, I remember our own. I, my husband and I decided on the date, and I told my family, and my family now told my husband's family. So things are changing a little bit, even from the time of my mother, for example. So they will, uh, the, once, they, once they decide on that date for the traditional engagement and set the date, 
That is when the alaga, the, as we know it now, comes in. So the spokesperson for the bride, the spokesperson for the groom. The, in the first one, there's really not a... In fact, in that one, it's usually just... They will just use somebody in the family. It could be maybe an uncle's wife um, uh, on this side and an uncle's aunt on this side, something like that. That's, what, that's how they do it. But when it comes to the, enga the traditional one, the engagement is small, is bigger. You, the, you, you use a bigger space, like in this case, if you don't want to rent a hall, you can put canopies in your backyard, you can use your backyard. Some people still use their living room depending on how rich you are or how much money you want to spend. Or you can do it in a hall, you can rent a hall and, and use the space there. And then you hire what they call a quote and unquote a professional. I don't know how they end up calling them professional because I don't know who is doing the training. But I hear now that in Nigeria they even have schools where they go to train them. But you know, I didn't get training officially from anybody. So what they do is, so once, you have, once you have that, you are ready for it. Let's say you are marrying a Yoruba girl, for example, and you are not Yoruba. You, your Alaga and you will meet and decide, okay, what are the cultures of this, fam, of this tribe that we are going to? Because you have to understand them. You have to know their culture. That well, this, These are the things they will accept. These are the things they will do. This is how they do it. For example, when you get there, they will tell you this is how you will greet them. We don't shake hands. You cannot go and be shaking hands with your in-laws. You don't, if you're a man, you don't go with your cap on your head and go and be greeting your in-laws. They will already tell you all those things. You must remove your hat, you put your hands behind you. you. When you get there, you prostrate. If you're a man, if you're a woman, you kneel down. They teach them all of that. They, they, the alaga will teach the groom side. And then when they come to the uh, bright side home, they will, alag, their own alaga is already sitting. She will meet them, you know, of course, they are coming with dancing, they have uh, a talking drum person that is beating the drum so that they can really give some rhythm because they're not dancing to Buga or all these songs or, that you guys listen to now. They sing, if they are Christians, they will sing Christian songs and they will beat the drum and they will dance, dance, real dance. And then the bright, the, the, the alaga on the bright side will now meet them and say, oh, how can we help you? Oh, we see you are all well-dressed. Is there something happening? Where are you going? Did you miss your way? And then the Alaga will say, no, we didn't miss our way. We, this is where we are coming. And then she will now, you know, go to the parents of the bride. The Alaga, their own Alaga will say, there are some guests at the gate. We don't know what they want. Maybe because they heard we're having a party because we're a joyous family. Is that why they are here? Uh, should I let them in? And then the family, the, the parents of the bride will say, oh, yeah, we, we invited them. Let them come in. So they come in and then the, the, the ceremony starts at that point. The, there are some things that uh, the, the, the Alaga will sing songs, she will welcome them, and uh, they, will, they will do all of those things. But they will, they, they, like I said, some things have changed. They will ask them for money, no, not ask them for money. I don't want, I always tell people that you don't want to assume is the money you are going to give me today as your alaga that will pay my rent. So I always try to let them know that it's all in good faith. If you have one dollar, put it in the bowl. Nobody is going to stop you. I mean, I won't. I know some alagas that will say, eh, me, as you see me like this, that's what you are giving me. I know, I've, 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 I know some people like that. But it's just, it's all, it's all in good faith. It's, it's all fun. It's just to make it fun. So once they, once they come in and they welcome them and sit down, they will have them to sit down then they will begin the, the process, which is basically, tell us why you are here. The, the, the groom side, the, the alaga of the bride will say, okay, tell, why are you here? What are you doing here? They will tell them why they are there. Once they explain, then the bride side will say, okay, let me go and tell them. Well, then they, they will say, they are supposed to bring a letter. I mean, what kind of, then, in fact, the groom's alaga should already say it, that we know that because she told us that she, she from the home that she came from, they are, you can't just go there and grab somebody. You have to formalize everything. So we have, we have a formal letter. And then they will present their letter. She will, the alaga of the bride will accept the letter, take it to the, to the parents of the bride, of course, with dancing and singing and all of that. And then the alagas, I mean, the bride's family will take the letter. She will give the letter to the father of the, or the, the, the senior, the, the man, whoever is representing the father, if the father is diseased. And then, uh, the father, no, sorry, they will give the letter to both of them. Now they give it to both of them. Before, they will give it to the mother. And the mother will now take it to the father and say, 
this is the letter that they have brought to us for your daughter in marriage and all that. And they will pray over the letter. Once they pray over the letter, then the, the other girl of the bride can now say, oh, thank you, we've received your letter, we'll let you know how things go. And then she will now in turn say, no, we can't go. We have to have results for, we, we must get a reply. So the, the other girl of the bride will go and bring the reply and give it to them. Of course, with dancing music and some money will change hands and all that. They give it to them. Once they get the letter, um, the, the next thing is to bring the bride. So they will insist, the, the group side will now insist that, ah, we cannot go without seeing the person that we came to see. We have to see our bride. That's when they will bring the bride. By this time, remember, when they came in, the groom already came with them because the, the, he's part of the, of the entourage. He's, he will come with his father, his mother, or whoever is representing both of them. They are all in the front and the others are following. So they are all there. And uh, so he's already seated. Usually they will find a chair above everybody for him. And then they'll bring the bride. The bride comes, she goes and greets her, um, her parents. Then she greets her, everybody. Then the alaga takes her to her parents' in-law. She greets them. And then they take her to go and sit down with, uh, with her husband-to-be. He's still not husband then. I remember there was a, one event I did earlier this year. And the, the, the bride's parents, they were so particular about calling her bride they kept saying because they and they are not nigerians they kept saying she's not your bride yet she's not a bride yet so we so i have to remind myself that it's a bride to be but you know in the traditional yoruba culture we try to explain to them once we do that engagement once we do that this introduction i mean this uh, engagement thing they're as good as married people some people never even went further to do the traditional i mean the church or court or anything i mean the church they do the court for record for, for just for their own purposes but as far as going to church and all they they, they don't they didn't do it and they are they're still married today to the glory of god so that is that as far as the alaga the history that i know about about the history of alaga it's, I mean, the, the only way you rank it is by experience. So, I mean, it's, by ex, it's by experience. That's, that's, for, that's a fact. Of course, somebody that just started last year and somebody that started 15, 20 years ago, you can't, you know, there has to be something that the person that started a few years ago would have over the person that's been doing it for some time. Uh, there's a proverb in, in Yoruba, I'm Yoruba, and that's, I always refer to that, uh, to the language that no matter how many clothes a child has, that child cannot have as many rags as, as a grown person. Because it, I mean, rags are clothes that you have used over some time and you don't need them again. So if a child now wants to say, say that, you know, so that's basically it. Experience, so you can rank them. For example, here in Houston, we have quite a lot. But then too, you can rank, you know which ones, we know those that are always called, those that are always busy. Those that always have uh, something to do. Not, not in the case of Alaga, this particular thing that we're talking about. There's nothing that, there's no conflict. If, you, if, you, if you're a Christian, for example, and you ask me to come and be your Alaga, I will just look for Christian songs. I'll look for songs that, you know, that you sing in churches that, that will be of interest to you. If you are not a Christian, even if you're not a Christian, if you're not a Christian, but you're, you or if you're a Christian, but not a practicing Christian, I will still sing those songs. If you're a Muslim, I will look for Muslim songs and sing for you. Uh, some songs are generic, so I may still sing those, but I will look for specific ones. I did one for uh, a Muslim family, I think last year, and I just looked for songs that are for Muslims, you know, that they sing in the mosque. In fact, I went to a birthday, somebody's birthday at a mosque, and I, was, I recorded the songs that they were singing, and, that's, and I used some of those. So I don't see a conflict in this particular instance. There's nothing diabolical about it. There's nothing, there's nothing to it, really. It's very straightforward. Oriki is just, um, it can, okay, Oriki can be a name, like a pet name that was given to a child when the child was born. For example, my own Oriki is Anike. A child that we are going to pamper. We have this child to pamper. 
So they they are different. So that's different. It's just a one one name that everybody is, is in Yoruba land. Every child, even our own daughters, they have Oriki. Uh, but there's Oriki delay. Oriki delay is the one that whereby the like um, what was the English word? I'm trying to remember now. Where you would just be like singing. It's almost like a ballad. Yes, almost like a ballad. That's it. That. It, it 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 tells it tells the history of the family. It tells whether they were warriors in the family, whether they were hunters, the fighters. You know, st those are the. Sometimes th they would say, "Oh, it's it's uh, it's their tradition. It's in their oriki that they are always angry, and when they are angry, no one can stop them." Those I I don't I tend not to dwell on them because I don't want to take. I don't want that to be me. I don't want to be known as that person that when they're angry, you can't stop them. Nothing can stop them. Some, some ch children, they will say when they're so angry, put oil on their head. Well, you know, palm oil, just drop it on. That's for them to calm down. I don't want my children to have that kind of history. So, but everybody in, I mean, in Yoruba land, although we may not know now because of so many things, because things have changed and people are losing those things. But I know my Oriki, for example. I know part of it, not all of it, both from my mother's side and my father's side. So that's, uh, the, but it's different from Alaga, the Alaga that we are talking about. is totally, they're not the same. So does an Alaga say about his Oriki? Sometimes, yes, if they know it. If, for example, if I want to do uh, the Alaga for a family and they have their Oriki, but, but because it's, Yoruba language is very tonal. So, one word can mean five things. So if you don't read it to me, I will ask you to read and record, and I will listen, listen. If I think I can do it, I will go for it. I may say a part of it, because there are some that are generic, especially for, for Lagos, for example, there's a generic Oriki for all Lagosians that you can use if you, are, if, you are, if you are doing it for somebody from Lagos, if you are for Ibadan, because every town has its own Oriki in Yoruba land, every town. So you can use that generically. For each of for for the person, but the family oriki, you have to know it, and somebody has to say it in your hearing. You can't. It's not something you read like English and you say you get it because it's not like that. 